So last time we talked about how to find the principal stresses and then the fact that in a homogeneous half space, one of the principal stresses is always vertical, right? So the other two are horizontal. And we can idealize the Earth as that, in that scenario. So we always have one principal stress vertical pointed into the Earth, and the other two in some plane, permanent, uh, some plane uh, defined as where the vertical stress is normal to that plane. In that plane, the two horizontal stresses are SH min and SH max. So there's a common fault classification scheme, uh, Anderson or Andersonian fault classification scheme that's based on these assumptions that the vertical stress is always uh, principal stress and then the other two stresses. And so then you can characterize the types of faults we talked about previously uh, in relation to these principal stresses. And that's the Anderson fault classification scheme. So the first one we talked about is the normal fault. And you remember, how do we characterize? I kind of gave you a hint as a how to characterize the normal fault. And it's normal to what? The motion of the hanging wall is normal to what? Gravity, Gravity right? So in this case, the vertical stress is greater than the two horizontal stresses to accommodate that motion, right? So if the, if the vertical stress, which remember stress multiplied by an area and you have force, so you can think of the vertical force is such to accommodate hanging wall motion in the same direction as gravity, right? And then the other two, uh, the other two are characterized by which stress uh, intersects in a plane normal to the fault. So in this case, well, not normal, but let's say oblique. And so here's our plane fault, our fault plane, and then this stress intersects that plane obliquely, right? And in this case, um, in the normal faulting regime, that would be SH min. And I'm trying to use the same uh, notation as what's in the book, Zobak's book. So there's been also been some questions about you know where we are in the book. Well, we're still in chapter one, and we'll cross over briefly into chapter two today. But uh, for the most part, we'll just finish up chapter one today. And so I'm trying to follow the consistent notation with that. So then we have the reverse fault, which is uh, just the opposite, right? So again, in this case, the vertical stress is less than the two horizontal stresses to accommodate the motion of the hanging wall moving up, right? And again, it's like I said before, the kind of hint to remember the reverse fault is that the hanging wall moves in the reverse of gravity. Right. And then the, the other uh, characteristic of this is that now, if we have our fault plane, it's SH max that crosses that plane obliquely. And so then the third case is the strike-slip fault. And in this case, the vertical stress is in between uh, the uh, maximum and minimum horizontal st stresses. And uh, you know I, I had to put these uh, blue vectors on here, and it was a little bit difficult to, to do it in such a way. But the, the point here is that this vector, it's not actually pointing up. It's, it's in the same plane. <coughs> Uh, as the, you know, it's, it's in the horizontal plane. So I, I tried to show that. Um, but it's the uh, horizontal, um, 
SH min and SH max are not necessarily uh, in the direction of, you know, along parallel to the fault line. So they, they, they cross it at some angle in the strike slip scenario. So just in summary, uh, you know, we have this chart. I think there was a similar chart in the book. And, you know, possibly it would have been more easier to remember if I were to place slight strike slip between normal and reverse. Because then you just have uh, then you just have the vertical stress along the diagonal. Right? So where S1, S2, and S3, remember, are the principal stresses, and they're always defined where S1 is greater than S2 <coughs> is greater than S3. So this is the Anderson or Andersonian fault classification <coughs> scheme. What's that? Uh, ah, thank you. I'll fix that. This is uh, this is S H min. Uh, just also following the notation of Zobac, you'll notice that the H is capital in the max and small in the min. So. I had intended to do the right thing there. I just I'll fix that in the uh, in the slides in case you guys check these later. <coughs>